Hello students, today let us discuss about surface of a rotating liquid and another problem is Coriolis force and these two are the applications of non-inertial frames of reference. Coming to the first slide, the first problem today we are going to discuss is a bucket of water spins with angular speed omega. What shape does the water surface assume? Uru Vellam Naracha Bucket Ningal Spin Jayanangal. If I am just spinning on its own axis, Anganangal water surface in the shape and the irikim. Next, as we know that uh, when the bucket with water spins, you will get a paraboloid, you will see a paraboloid shape on the surface of the water. And in the Figure on the right, you can see the forces acting on this water element on the surface. I have considered a small element of water and in that small element of water, the forces acting are the weight W and the centrifugal force which is acting outwards radially that is M R M V square by R or M R omega square. And the normal reaction force and also a fictitious force if I am observing this motion inside the frame which is in the bucket. So the fluid height at a given point on the surface depends only on the distance rho between its point and the z axis. So let us derive what will be the equation of the surface of the water. As you can see in this figure, I have considered an element of mass m of water on the surface and, the and I have drawn the various forces acting on the small element of water. You can see the forces acting are the weight W vertically downwards and the contact force F0 acting which is normal to the surface and the fictitious force which is acting radially outward which is basically the centrifugal force and now if I am resolving the components of F0 along horizontal and vertical directions, at equilibrium condition, the total force along the vertical and horizontal component is 0. So F0 is acting in this direction, F0 is making an angle theta, uh, uh, sorry, phi with the vertical. So the component of F0 along vertical is F0 cos phi, the weight acting vertically downward is W. So if the net acceleration is zero because of equilibrium, so the net force will be zero along the z direction. So therefore, F0 cos phi minus W is equal to zero. And if I resolve the forces along the horizontal direction, F0 sine phi, which is acting in this direction, that is towards the center of the bucket. And the fictitious act force is acting radially outward that is plus x axis and if there is no net acceleration in the x axis we can say the net force is also zero along the x direction so the net force the total net force is minus f0 sin phi that is a that is the first force which is the component of f0 and the fictitious force is equal to zero If we have a surface, we have a surface that is not a surface that is not a surface that is not a contact force just like a reaction force. We have a fictitious force that is opposite to the reaction acceleration. 
ഈ റൊട്ടേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് കൊണ്ട് എപ്പോഴും ആക്സിലേഷൻ ടുവേർഡ്സ് ദ സെന്റർ ആൻഡ് അലോങ് ദ റേഡിയസ് ആയിരിക്കും അതിന്റെ ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ഡയറക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് ടു അവേ ഫ്രം ദ സെന്റർ ആൻഡ് അലോങ് ദ റേഡിയസ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ ഫിക്കിറ്റീഷ്യസ് ഫൗസ് ആക്ടിംഗ് അവേ ഫ്രം ദ റേഡിയസ് അലോങ് ദ അവേ ഫ്രം ദ സെന്റർ ആൻഡ് അലോങ് ദ റേഡിയസ് ആണ് ഫിക്കിറ്റീഷ്യസ് ഫോസ് അതിനുശേഷം ഈ ഫോഴ്സുകളുടെ ഹൊറിസോണ്ടൽ ആൻഡ് വെർട്ടിക്കൽ കമ്പോണന്റ് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുകയും സോളിഡ്സ് liquids are free to move other rather than solids that for the liquids cannot exert a static tangential force on the to the surface just like so, solids so therefore the contact force the force on m due to the neighboring liquid must be perpendicular to the surface so that means there will be no displacement there is no work done therefore if uh, cos 90 is zero the work done due to the uh, contact force in this liquid case is zero because the liquid cannot uh, move something tangentially because of its mobility and therefore we can say that the the slope on of any point on the surface of this water is basically defined by the first derivative of the coordinate so if z is a coordinate of a point on the surface of water dz by ds r represents the slope of the point z at a point and that will be equal to tan phi and tan phi is already obtained from the equating the forces along the horizontal and vertical direction and the putting the value of tan phi which is omega square r by g and dz by dr is found out and if i integrate this relation we can obtain the equation of the surface so in the next slide, i found the value of dz and then i integrated the value of dz on both sides integral dz is equal to omega square by g integral r dr so if i integrate in the r dr i will get r square by 2 so finally i got z equal to 1 by 2 omega square by g r square so here you can see the z the position coordinate or the position uh, or the distance or a point is proportional to the radius square and this is just uh, similar to the equation of the paraboloid of revolution surface of paraboloid and thus we can say that your your water your water in a bucket if the bucket is spinning and that surface will be a paraboloid of revolution and that is the end of this first problem so the conclusion is that if a bu bucket with water spins along its, its own axis the surface of the water will be paraboloid of revolution next problem a bead slides without friction on a rigid wire rotating at a constant angular speed omega the problem is to find the force exerted by the wire on the bead you can see the figure here there is a wire and in that wire there is a bead and the bead is sliding without friction along this wire but the wire is rotating along an axis perpendicular to its length that is the z axis so we know that if a body rotates the angular velocity uh, omega will be along the axis of rotation here it is z axis and this is the direction of rotation and at an instant the position vector of the bead is r and here we have mentioned that it is a frictionless wire therefore we can say the contact force normal is acting normal to the wire and we neglect gravity so in the force diagram given in the below we can see the various forces acting on the bead one is the centripetal force i mean centrifugal force which, uh, and the other is the coriolis force and the centrifugal force is just like a uh, fictitious force which is acting away from the along the radius away from the center 
and if I am assuming that the Coriolis force is, uh, is perf uh, in this case is vertically downward. I mean, in this case is perpendicular to the sun. So coming to the next slide. Now, if we equate the uh, the forces on both sides, the centripetal force is given by centrifugal force is given by m r double dot, and along the y direct along the y direction, the net force is zero. So, since the Coriolis force doesn't produce any uh, acceleration and the forces along the x y direction is cancelled, so the normal reaction minus the Coriolis force is equal to zero and the centripetal fo centrifugal force is m r omega square r and therefore we can write m r double dot minus m omega square r is equal to zero this is the equation of the motion of the uh, of the bead in the sliding in a wire and if we solve this equation which is a second order uh, second order differential equation and that will give you the solution of the form a e raised to omega t plus a b e raised to minus omega t and the constants a and b depends on the initial conditions. So therefore the tangential equation of motion which expresses the fact that there is no tangential acceleration in the rotating system. Here you can see the along the radius you can have if the r is the position r is uh, expressed in terms of omega and t and we can see in the rotating system the tangential equation of motion expresses that there is no tangential acceleration so the value of the coriolis force is given by 2 m r dot omega that is 2 m omega square a putting the value of uh, r uh, in this r dot we can get put the value of r in this equation and find the r dot dr by dt that is the de derivative of time you will get the expression for the Coriolis force which is 2m omega square a e raised to omega t minus b e raised to omega t so if i want to solve this problem completely i should know the initial conditions that will give you the value of a and b so this is how we illustrated the effect of Coriolis force and uh, so the Coriolis force uh, is perpendicular to the, both the angular velocity and the fictitious and the centripetal uh, centrifugal force. So, in some cases, the Coriolis effect is uh, very much uh, observe observable. In very small cases, in small small bodies where the omega is very small and m is very small, the value of the Coriolis force is very uh, very small, so that it is difficult to measure that value of the Coriolis force. So with this we come to the end of this today's uh, lecture. Uh,